So this guy right here is brought on um, to explain polls, economics, things like that. That's who they lean on this guy right here for. So they're going to pivot from this story to the next. So thank you, uh, Nick, for uh, uh, explaining that to me. So apologies to those in the audience. Here we go. So we're in a waiting game, uh, Joe and Mika. But yeah. right now there is a sense that talks will resume and there's still at least some hope something can get done before the winter break. All right, let's bring in right now former Treasury official and morning Joe economic analyst Steve Ratner, not at the Southwest Wall today. This is very disconcerting and yeah. disappointing. Uh, you know, um, talking about the economy, the state of the economy, how Americans feel about the economy, people are going to vote in the election, how they feel about the economy. I'm reminded of, of the old joke, what are you going to believe, me or your lying eyes? You're here to tell us that voters are believing their lying eyes. <laughs> he completely flipped that uh, figure of speech. That figure of speech is completely meant to be your eyes is telling you the truth. Are you going to believe your lion eyes or me? That is a sales, a, a, a super slick, corrupt sales person is the one who's telling you this. Are you going to believe me selling you this magic beans or your lion eyes? Joe Scarborough just said, you're going to believe your lion eyes. Yes, we're going to believe our own experience. I'm not sure he understands what he just said. I'm going to rewind it and let it play some more. I'm not sure he understands the saying and what he just said. Let's see if he cleans it up. Economy, the state of the economy, how Americans feel about the economy. People are going to vote in the election, how they feel about the economy. I'm reminded of, of the old joke, what are you going to believe, me or your lying eyes? You're here to tell us that voters are believing their lying eyes. Lord, this guy. Yeah, look, I, I in, instead of the reality that's right before them. Yes, there, there are a lot. Of, there's a lot of polling data on this. Isn't there lying eyes looking at the data? Like I said, I, I'm not sure he understands what that means. It doesn't feel like this, he does. And it basically shows 23% of Americans think we're on the right track. The rest think we're on the wrong track. One of the, some of the worst numbers we've ever seen. They think inflation is going up. It's actually going down. They think they're after inflation incomes are going down. They're actually going. Up. We think inflation is going up. We think our pay is going down. It's going up. So the money getting to deposit into our accounts from our employers is, is going up, and we have no idea that it's going up. What, and you think this economic guy doesn't know what I'm about to say here? What they're talking about is the buying power of the dollar is diminishing. There is no disconnect. They know exactly what's going on. There is no disconnect. The buying power of the dollar. So you can say there is a one single digit percentage of a wage increase. What does that mean when the value of what the dollar can buy has severely declined? What does that mean? Like it's so it's so uh, unreal that these people and now understand he's from where do they say he's from he's from uh, what's the thing that Janet Yellen is over the Treasury Department. So you think the guy from the Treasury Department is going to be talking in terms from the perspective of a worker? You think they have? I don't even know. Understand, I don't even know if they have the ability to diagnose why what they describe as a disconnect that the supposedly the the economy is going great, but for whatever reason, wait till they get to Al Sharpton though. Going up, and so I have a piece that is in the New York Times uh, op-ed today to try to explain why is that. And I basically think there's two reasons why people are so grumpy about the economy. Grumpy. The first is because of inflation. Two thirds of Americans. Uh, oh, oh! Him. because you can't pay your rent and you're getting evicted, that's just being grumpy, guys. <laughs> um, 
not being able going from two, uh, three meals to two meals a day. That's you just being grumpy. That's it. Having to work 60 hours and still living paycheck to paycheck. You're just gr grumpy, guys. Stop. Come on out here and vote for Joe. I've never seen inflation above 4%. Right. You and I live through it. We know about it. We, we know kind of how to deal with it. For them, this has been a real wake-up call. And they do blame the president more than they blame the Republicans. And if you remember, the president came into office talking about jobs. Mm -hmm. We had a huge set of packages to try to adjust jobs. And so he became the jobs president. And then inflation became a problem. And the Republicans, as you saw in one of those clips from the debate that you showed a little while ago, are basically trying to pin the inflation on him. By the way, inflation is 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 really again, we talked about age in the last segment. Seems to me from what I'm hearing, inflation really is the underlying issue mm -hmm. that probably is making more of a difference in these approval rating numbers than anything else. Because yes, inflation's down mm -hmm. two, three percent, but you see, you know, add that to the nine percent, to the seven percent, people are paying a lot more than they paid in Oh Joe. It sounds like you're figuring it out, sir. You mean to tell me that inflation went up 9% and now because it's down 3%, we're supposed to shout for joy and say the economy's going great. That's what they think we're supposed to do. 2019. That said, look at the numbers out there and, and people just believe one thing after another about the economy that's wrong they do now on the inflation as i said they do pin that on biden for reasons that we can right. understand if you go back in history right. and the polling data is very clear on that but underlying all this in my opinion anyway is a deep pessimism about the future people are more worried about the future than they've ever been 21 percent, only 21 percent of americans think their kids are going to live better than they will right. that is they they the numbers like this um where they feel their propaganda is not obviously being effective in the way that it used to be this is why they're building cop city we've we've reached a tipping point where um People aren't buying the normal narratives that are coming from the establishment that we can clearly see are lies now. The internet is an amazing thing. It allows us to peer share to uh, share uh, uh, peer to peer and cut out the middleman filter that is um, the establishment. So, and this has been, this has like turned their app, their app, their, their Apple cart has been completely flipped over. They have no idea what to do except for censorship. This is why the whole term misinformation, they can see on the horizon, this is not going to be good. We have people like, you know, Jimmy Dore and Comrade Misty and Convo Couch, Fiorella and, and uh, over at the Convo Couch. And uh, 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 Pasta, I was I was blanking on the name. I didn't want to say Craig. I wanted to use his name that he's known for. But Pasta over uh, at the um, Convo Couch and the Do Dissidents Boys and and uh, Kurt over at, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Kid over at uh, Heartlands Media. We're giving raw, un, like raw truth to people. And people aren't watching these channels. They're not watching cable news anymore. Literally, Tucker Carlson on uh, X or Twitter uh, gets more views than the vast majority of especially cable news uh, shows. Now, just understand, cable news, even when they're considered getting great ratings, they're, you're, we're only talking about 3 million uh, viewers. That's great ratings for a cable news. But you have some of these shows. Why, when Don Lemon left, Don Lemon was getting a hundred and fifty thousand views. A <laughs> hundred and fifty thousand views was something like, like so. People aren't listening to them, and this is a panic. And I'm just saying, Nick, 
with this economic news and this polling, how the polling is not matching their propaganda, their normal propaganda is not being effective. And I was saying this is the reason why they're doing things like building Cop City. They can see yeah. what's on the horizon here. Go That's ahead. That's why sir, they want to ban TikTok. That's yes. why they want to ban TikTok. That's why yes. Biden is taking it to the Supreme Court. The ability for them to monitor social media and pressure pressure them to censor people. They doing that because they know they lost an entire generation on the corporate media front. And I look at what they're saying here. I said it many times before. Like when they talk about GDP, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> GDP, fuck that to do with me. People's minds are so colonized, and I'm glad people are. A lot of people are breaking out of this, obviously based on polling, where they will be struggling. <laughs> CJ, their their kids will have two meals instead of three. They will. They have no savings. Uh, spend a ton of money on health care. And, and back in the day, they would say, oh, I guess the economy good, so I guess I should support the establishment. And the only thing that matters is the GDP of your home, how you're feeling. Why, why should you take these random numbers that they give you and be like, I know I'm personally struggling in my, in my life. I know that my neighborhood is struggling. I know our streets falling apart. I know our family don't have health care. But they say the GDP is good, so fuck it. I get buying this credit. How does that make sense? How does that serve us? That's how they want us to think of things. And that's why they, they are having a meltdown here. Obviously, I was listening to the whole thing, even though as I was getting prepared. Uh, they're like, people are, uh, they, they are, they are upset because people won't accept their reality. That you look at these right. fucking bullshit numbers that they throw out. It has, it, like, it's supposed to have any relevance to our lives whatsoever. But uh, go ahead, CJ. Uh, no, that's fine. That's uh, yes, sir. Clarenberg, he's from the Gray Zone UK. He should be joining us, uh, as you said earlier, top of the hour. hour. But I was listening the whole time, so I'll, I'll pass it back to see uh, to you, CJ. I'll be here listening and commenting if I yeah. Find interesting on. But go ahead, CJ. Yeah. Um. So I kind of fast forward a little bit because I do want everybody before I close this, and I want to show another video to you before a uh, kick gets here. Um. Of course, Al Sharpton has to be the resident, and I like using Negro servant now instead of coons because they bleep out coons. You know what I mean? Negro yeah. servant is one they don't have yet. They haven't recognized. So he's a resident Negro servant that they have on to say black people feel we concur with this nonsense that you're saying. So let's listen. Listen. I mean, this guy's a sellout on top of sellout, but let's listen to Al Sharpton here standard of living if we don't become more efficient more productive as an economy then that obviously oh my god no as a marxist nick i have to let you listen to this shit right here when he's talking about productivity listen to this shit let me let me let me mm. rewind this shit right here listen to this mm, let me make sure shit. i rewind it enough 45 seconds let me make sure i get all of what he says here more energized about their their lives and careers well interest rates are starting to come down the mortgage rate has gone from eight to seven that doesn't sound great but at least it's moving in the right direction but look the, the most fundamental problem which i talk about well two fundamental problems i talk about in the piece one we've talked about a lot here which is the debt and i think people they're not economists but they i think understand the idea that we're piling up all this debt and it's going to have to be dealt with somehow, some way. But the other problem that doesn't really get much attention, I don't want to get too wonky here, is what we call productivity, the economy getting oh, more Jesus productive Christ. and more efficient. And the productivity rate has been dropping steadily for the last 20, 30, 40 years. And that's what in increases people's standard of living. If we don't become more efficient, more productive as an economy, what does that mean exactly, Steve, productivity? It literally means how much does a worker produce for an in an hour, mm -hmm. uh, in a fact. Jesus Christ. Nick, Nick, <laughs> I, I, when I, I was like, what? Let me see what, if I can find some receipts. What? <laughs> yeah, I, need, I need to find receipts on this. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, so I'll let you find a receipt. Let me say this part. But there's a lot to say. <laughs> yes, ahead, I ahead. was like, I was like, what? So the, the first thing, what? instantly came to mind when he said this was like how do you explain i mean going off what they're saying let's say we believe what he's saying because he's saying right long. now productivity 
the last 20, <laughs> the last 23 years has been going down. So let's say the previous 23 years before that, right? When it was going up and productivity was going this way, why wasn't wages going exactly. up at that time? As productivity is going up, why wasn't wages? Because in when we say wages should go up now, you what the way you combat that is what he just said. Productivity is not going up, so you can't. There's you, you don't have a reason to say wages should because productivity is not. But go ahead with your response, like, sir. Like a Zionist, uh, these unhinged capitalists they say stuff where you're like. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me think about stuff I read in the past. Everything I read that debunks the bullshit that you said. I had to think like, all right, which receipt I'm gonna pull up here? So, once again, it didn't take long. Just one of many, fam. One of many. Um, growing inequalities, reflecting growing employer power, have generated a productivity pay gap since 1979. Productivity has grown 3.5 times as much as pay for a typical worker. These, these capitalists, they live in a fancy <laughs> land and they know this. CJ, when, when you see this, oh, do you think that he, he believes he's telling the truth? I don't. I see no. someone who is engaging in class war. And what do people in our empire believe about war? When you're at war, everything goes. It's okay to lie when you're in war. It's it called controlling the narrative. Uh, uh, it's information warfare. So he going on on TV to lie to people sponsored by billionaires who fund the network, fund the host, right? So he heard to spread propaganda on behalf of the uh, uh, of the billionaire class, of the capitalist class. That's why I was talking to someone. Uh, God bless. Them, I was on the show. I'll get on shot here soon. But I was talking before. They asked me a question like. What do you think people don't focus enough on? And I'm like, dude, my patience for people pushing the culture war has beyond rent then. It's beyond over. I'm done, especially in time of genocide, in yes, time of mass true. wealth transfer. Right now, people pushing uh, uh, bullshit culture wars, which it helps their channels. Like, they do much better than we do, the people who does that, who do that, right? But you got... Massive class warfare that the, the ruling class is engaged in at all times. So it frustrates me that anyone who is not of the managerial class, of the ruling class, they will waste any of their time on culture, given what we're up against. Do you guys know why Ben Shapiro, uh, Andrew Tate, Tucker Carlson, and many other rich people focus on the culture war? They're bored. That's what they do. When you all are in agreement on a central philosophy, you you got to find something that is spicy to, to debate about. Right. You got to find something to divide. So since so they all agree on the 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 theft of labor value, the imperial machine, they then focus on the culture war instead. And you got to know as a capitalist, they are laser focused on the class war. That's my point. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, CJ. Um, that one of many receipts you can find the, to debunk that bu that uh, bullshit, but you guys yeah. know it's nonsense. So go ahead, CJ. Yeah, and the thing is, like, this is the, this when we are watching this propaganda. This happens all the time, Nick. I'm not even watching it to cover that part of the story. I'm yeah. watching yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, cover exactly, else. exactly. And then they just say some other wild shit. You be like, what, 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 what did you say? Like all the time. But anyway, let's let's try to finish this. I just want to finish it on the point that. Al Sharpton yeah. makes, let this Negro servant speak here. Factory, and so it depends on the amount of technology they have available, the amount of training they have available, investment, uh, regulation, and they're not being too much. It's a very deep-seated, long-run problem. If you think back to the, after post-World War II, and we had this incredible rising set of standards of living, it's because the economy was really getting much more efficient. And that has steadily, steadily, steadily declined to almost a little over 1% at the moment. And so it's very hard for people's standard of livings to go up. Steve, wouldn't you would therefore advise, as, as I'm reading your column? So oh, just as a quick counterpoint to what you said. That the Biden... And let me real quick, CJ, don't worry. But mm -hmm. you notice yeah, how he, yeah. he framed it as productivity is related to the standard of living for workers. And he mentioned, and that his thesis was that's why things may not be so good. But as I showed you earlier before, productivity is not related to wages and what they pay you at all. Profit is stolen labor value. 
if you're a worker in a profitable business, you are providing great amount of value. The amount of value you provide to society in the capitalist system is not dependent on how important your work is. It depends on whether or not your man, uh, the person who manages your labor value can get away with stealing or not. And these people are 100% okay with that. But let's continue. I just want to yeah. make Oh, he's he's from uh, Jalen. Uh, he's from the Treasury Department, so you know. Yeah, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, I'm blanking on his name right yeah, now. But I know, you know he's I know straight up that capitalist. Yeah. All right, so let's listen. Finish listening to what he says here. A uh, campaign in the Biden administration ought to deal with yes, the facts are what they are that we're doing better than we think, but at the same time we understand kids are staying home; they can't afford to get to a new house or that there are challenges we face and address the future. Because I think, I look in, in a, a lot in the black community, unemployment among blacks is lower than it's been in decades. But you can't oh, convince Christ. that of people when they have their grown kids still staying there. So what this Negro servant doesn't understand, what does, so he's coming in, unemployment is as low in how many decades? You know when unemployment what at was at its lowest in the black community, Nick? Uh, slavery. Slavery. That was a hundred percent employment during slavery. So how does employment tell you how the economy in people's home is doing, right Nick? On, it has right. nothing to do with it at all. What employment has to do is if you're an owner and you exploit workers, you go, wow. I'm, ex I, I'm not, you know, it's 3% of the people I'm not exploiting. That's pretty damn good. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. all from the perspective of an owner, not a, uh, a, per a worker. And this is why there's no disconnect. They completely understand what they're doing. They're conflating what owners want with, and not understanding what owners want and the things that tell you that owners are getting that. And that's talking about like GDP. That's talking about like the, the stock market, how that doesn't translate anything at all to workers. What does that have to do with us? Like you say all the time, what does that have to do with me? Nothing. 